Okay. Today, once again, I'm going to be reading from the Scope Magazine, May 2020, Volume 68, Issue Number 8. And I will be reading to you pages 17, 18, and 19, and then 20 and 21. These are both uh, part of the paired text section, and both of them, um, one is nonfiction, and then the one on 20 and 21 is a full tale, therefore it is not true. So if you would please, let's go to page 17. We're gonna read the monster. It deals with fear. And while we are reading, let's think about how we can overcome our fears. Fear is a natural human emotion, but what happens when it takes over your life? For years, Kyle Hargreaves, 13, had a secret fear. It wasn't a fear of snakes or spiders. It wasn't a fear of heights or water. Kyle was afraid of costumed characters, like the ones you see hugging little kids at theme parks and the mascots you see goofing around at sporting events. Such characters caused Kyle to experience true terror. His heart would pound, sweat would pour down his face, he would have trouble breathing. What's wrong with me, Kyle wondered. Kyle tried to control his fear, but he couldn't. As time went by, the problem only seemed to get worse. Then one day at a hockey game near his hometown of Reading, Pennsylvania, the sight of mascots caused Kyle such distress that his dad thought Kyle was having a stroke. What is a phobia? Kyle was suffering from a phobia, an extreme, irrational, and lasting fear of something. Specifically, he was suffering from masklophobia. Masklophobia. Fear of people in masks and costumes. When people with phobias encounter, or in some cases, just think about the thing they fear, they react severely. They may panic, they may vomit, or feel like they're going to pass out. Millions of Americans suffer from phobias. Scientists aren't sure what exactly causes them, but they do know that they are related to fear. Survival tool. We all experience fear from time to time. It's the feeling when our hearts pound at the top of a roller coaster or when we jump out of our seats during a scary movie. Fear is also what keeps us from wandering into traffic or getting too close to a campfire. That's because fear is a survival tool. Its point is to help us stay alive. So how does it work? Biologically, fear is the result of a reaction that takes place mainly in two parts of our brains, the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex. Remember, I keep telling you students, this is your prefrontal cortex. This is my think before I act and think before I speak. That's the prefrontal cortex. And if I'm not mistaken, your amygdala is down here at the bottom of your brain at the top of your spinal cord. When we detect something that could be a threat, the amygdala, which processes emotion, causes us to react swiftly. We become instantly alert, perhaps breaking into a sweat or jerking away. Then the cortex, which processes our thoughts, helps us decide what to do next. Let's say, for example, you're hiking through the woods and you see something that looks like a poisonous snake. Your amygdala tells your body to jump back. Then the cortex comes along and helps you decide either, yes, that is a snake, and I'm going to move away from it now, or no, that's just a branch, so I can relax and resume my hike. This complex biological reaction is all part of something known as fight or flight, which prepares our bodies to respond quickly to danger. When our fight or flight response is activated, whether by a real threat or not, our hearts race, increasing blood flow to our muscles so we can run fast or fight hard. Meanwhile, our brains pump hormones into our bodies that make us alert and focused so we can cope with the situation at hand. Phobia versus fear. But having a phobia is different from simply being afraid of something. With a phobia, the fight or flight response is triggered by something that isn't as threatening as the person feels it is. And the feelings of terror don't go away. People with phobias often understand that their fears are irrational, yet they feel helpless to stop them. Given the intensity of the terror, it's understandable that people with phobias sometimes go to extreme lengths to avoid the thing they fear. Someone with claustrophobia 
fear of small enclosed spaces might walk up 30 flights of stairs rather than step into an elevator, for example. For Kyle, his phobia led him to avoid sports games, amusement parks, theme restaurants, and any other place where he might encounter a costumed character. But avoidance makes phobias worse, says Amit Etkin, a professor of psychiatry at Stanford University. If you don't interact with the thing that scares you, your brain will never accept that it's not harmful, and the fear can become even more exaggerated. That's why people with phobias are encouraged to work with a mental health professional, such as a psychologist or a counselor, to face their fears in a safe and healthy way. Getting help. And that is exactly what Kyle decided to do. Not long after the hockey game, his dad took him to the Child Studies Center at Virginia Tech. There, Kyle was treated with a technique called exposure response and prevention, in which patients with phobias are gradually exposed to what frightens them. For example, a patient with arachnophobia slowly moves closer to a spider. And over time, when nothing bad happens, the feeling of fear around spiders lessens. Kyle's treatment began when he was greeted by a man carrying a bunny costume. Kyle started to panic but didn't run away. He knew he needed to face his fear. Once Kyle felt calm, the man put on the body of the costume but not the head. Kyle again became anxious but eventually he relaxed. Then the two played basketball. After a while, the man put on the head and other costume characters joined the game. Kyle was anxious every step of the way. By the end of the day, though, his fear had dissipated. That evening, he and his dad went to an annual event at Virginia Tech called Gobbler Fest, where they are interact with many mascots. Kyle felt no trepidation at all. At one point, he even high-fived one of the mascots. To prevent his phobia from returning, Kyle had to enter an act with costume characters several times a week for one month. To celebrate Kyle's new fear, or new fear-free relationship with costume characters, his family decided to take a trip. Where did they go? Disney World. Let's look at how to face your fears. Um, we're still on 19. It's the blue box. We all experience fear from time to time. Here are five tips from the experts on how to conquer what scares you. Get some rest. Sleep is always important, but it's even more important when you're stressed, says Stephanie Woodrow, a mental health counselor who specializes in anxiety disorders. Get at least eight hours of sleep, especially the night before an event you're anxious about, like a big test or a swim meet. Two, don't avoid what you are afraid of. Getting out of your comfort zone can help you grow. But if you're dealing with a phobia, experts recommend working with a professional. Limit your caffeine. If you're feeling anxious, caffeine can make the problem worse by making you jittery, says Woodrow. So if you're scared of public speaking, for example, skip your energy drink or soda before your big class presentation. Four says you can talk to someone. Feeling like a fear or phobia is taking over your life is a sign that it's time to seek help. Talk to a trusted adult, such as a parent, a guardian, a teacher, a school counselor, or your coach, and let them know you are struggling, and they can then get you the support you need. Lastly, exercise. Exercise Woodrow releases feel-good hormones in the body called endorphins, and endorphins can reduce anxiety. Go for a walk, take a dance break, or kick a ball around. Let's go to 20. This is the folktale, therefore it is not true. And it says, conquering fear on a quest for bravery, young Neob must face a terrifying beast. Once upon a time in a village in Ethiopia, there lived a boy who was so shy and fearful of the world around him that his family and friends and neighbors called him Neobi, frightened one. Why do you call me that? The boy asked. They laughed. Because you are afraid. Neobi pondered these words. He decided he must find a way to overcome his fear. So he packed a sack and set off into the world to find what he feared and to conquer it. That night, he slept under the wild umbre wide umbrella of the sky and stared up at the darkness. Before drifting off to sleep, he whispered to himself, I see you, but I will conquer you, fear. At midnight, the wolves began to howl. The sound woke Miobi, but instead of running away, he walked toward the sound, saying aloud, I will conquer you, fear. He walked until the sun began to rise, and when he saw its golden orb, he smiled with relief, for he had survived the first night. 
I am becoming brave, he said as he walked on. Soon he came to a village. I don't know these people at all, he thought. They might be unkind to a stranger. But he straightened up and walked into the village, saying aloud, I will conquer you, fear. He found the village elders muttering amongst themselves. As Myobi came near, they looked up and sneered. Who are you? I'm traveling the world to become brave, the elders laughed. Fool, no one can find bravery where it does not exist. What do you mean, Myobi asked. The elders sighed unhappily. We are doomed, said one man. Our village is threatened by a monster. Myobi followed the man's gaze to the top of the mountain. See him there, the man said. Myobi squinted. He did not want to insult the man, but he saw nothing. Look, said another man. See, it has the head of a crocodile, a monstrous crocodile, and the body of a gigantic hippopotamus, cried another man. It's like a dragon, yet another man cried, with fire shooting from its snout. Now Myobi began to see the monster, the smoke and fire, the wrinkled skin, the fiery eyes. I see, he said, but silently he promised himself he would not be afraid. Everywhere people in the village cowered. Children hid inside, refusing to go to school. If the children go outside, the women said, the monster will come down from the mountain and eat them. Everyone knows monsters eat children. Farmers hovered in their doorways, hose and rakes in hand. Outside their horses stood unharnessed. We cannot work, they told Miobi. If we go into the fields, the monster will come down and get us. Miobi saw goats, sheep, and cows wandering out at the edge of the village. No one came to milk them or tend to them. No one planted crops. Few left their homes. The monster is going to destroy us, they whispered amongst themselves as Myobi listened. Finally, Myobi decided it was up to him to destroy the monster. I wish to conquer fear, he announced, and so I shall climb the mountain and slay the monster. No, son, don't do it, the elders cried. You will die. Myobi shivered and his heart fluttered, but he was determined. I must conquer fear, he said. At the base of the mountain, Myobi looked up and felt a cheer, chill. The monster appeared bigger and more fiery than any dragon, fiercer than a pack of wolves or a nest of snakes. He remembered the days when he was afraid. With a deep breath, he began to climb. As he climbed, he looked up, but now he saw the monster seem smaller. How peculiar, he said aloud. He continued to climb. Halfway up, he looked again. He squinted, shielding his eyes. But the monster's eyes no longer seemed as fierce. The flames no longer shoot from its snout. The closer I get, the smaller he looks, Myobi said, puzzled. He continued to climb, pulling his dagger from his sack so that he would be prepared. As he came around a bend in the path, he saw the summit before him. He gasped. The monster had disappeared. Myobi looked behind him. Surely the creature would sneak up from behind it to attack. But when he turned, he saw nothing. He heard nothing. He held his breath. Then he continued on until at last he reached the top. All was empty and quiet. Nothing was there. Suddenly he heard a sound at his feet. He looked down and saw a little creature, a toad with wrinkled skin and round frightened eyes. How did you become so small, he asked. The monster said nothing, so Myobi cradled it in his hands and walked down the mountain. When he reached the village, the people cried, he's safe, and they surrounded him. Myobi held out his hands and showed them the tiny wrinkled toad. This is the monster, he said. What is your name, the elder asked the toad. The creature croaked, and the elder looked up at the crowd and said, Myobi has brought us the monster, its name is fear. And that is the story of conquering fear. And that's a folk tale. That is how different culture pass down answers or solutions to issues. So you will have a little worksheet to do. I hope you're all fine. Have a wonderful day and stay healthy.